Welcome to Real Estate in the Digital Age, or the Reda Podcast. Real estate entrepreneurs Ryan Poole and Ryan Beckett bring you new content every week, reporting on market trends, industry innovations, cutting-edge real estate technology, and perspectives from the field. The future of real estate is here. Are you ready? All right, welcome everyone to Real Estate in the Digital Age, the Reda podcast. We're really excited, Ryan Poole and I. We have a good friend of the podcast, Jason Lin, with Decorators Unlimited. So I'll go ahead and hand it off to Jason, let you give a little, little intro. Well, thanks. Thanks for both of you guys having me. Um, yeah, Decorators Unlimited, uh, we've been around for a long time. My business partner, Bob Martin, started it back in 1985, uh, so coming up in our 38th year of success. We've got a, almost 100-plus employees uh, 55,000 square wow. foot facility up in Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, we're a turnkey high-end interior design firm. Blessed to work with all of you real estate agents, brokers, developers. God bless you. Architects all over yes. the world. Yeah, we do need blessings to <laughs> you guys. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we're blessed to play in the high-end world all over the globe from single family to multifamily to the Ritz-Carlton's the Four Seasons. So we're uh, one of the blessed ones. So you guys are doing residential. You're doing commercial. Don't you guys even do some some luxury boats and everything as well sometimes? We get offered to do luxury boats and yachts. It's really not our claim to fame. You know, the type turnarounds, the type materials, it's just really not our bread and butter. What we focus on is what you mentioned, this, the high-end single-family luxury real estate division, um, towers, condo towers, and then multifamily middle size projects, uh, not only locally but globally. We've probably got 20 to... 30 projects right now around the world. Got it. Yeah. And Ryan Polo and I have been in the business for a long time. I personally have not se- seen a well-oiled machine mm-hmm. like Decorators Unlimited. How many, how many people did you say you have in your firm now? We got almost 100. Uh, we've got 20 senior designers. We've got our own in-house architectural team. We also have a construction division that my mm-hmm. business partner, Bob Martin, started. Um, we have our own logistics in-house, our own warehousing. I've got our own fleet of trucks, a showroom. You know, in, in our game, the more control you have, the more success you have. So Bob and I are best best known as OCD control freaks. Yeah. Yes. But our clients love it. Our wives hate it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's all about our business first and family second. No, I'm just kidding, babe. I love you. But <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. So, you know, you guys are called Decorators Unlimited, but you, would you think it's more accurate to say that you guys are very heavy on the design aspect of the projects, right? Absolutely. Bob founded the firm back in 1985, as I mentioned, and he had a name in his head and it stuck and we've done, we've done really good with branding, but we're a design firm. We have designers that we hire with a high education, some architectural, some engineering, obviously interior designs, but we handle process from the beginning to the end. So we handle the architectural review. We handle the space wow. planning. We pick all the finishes for the entire project inside and out. And then the best part is we furnish it. We're one of the largest purchasers of furniture in the state of Florida. We purchased 30 plus millions of dollars. So from the, from beginning to end, our fingerprints are on it. We have control. We're involved in the construction aspect. You know, I'm a team guy. I'm former mm-hmm. military. So for me, if the client's happy, the builder's happy, and my team's happy, that's all I care about. That's awesome. Uh, so our podcast, obviously, is real estate, <laughs> yes. tech, digital. Um, what are you guys seeing in the space um, you guys are based in, in Palm Beach Gardens, but as I understand it, you guys are across the country and even international sometimes, right? Absolutely. Our business has definitely changed. The internet has basically changed the game. Mm-hmm. I now have my own social media marketing manager in house. She's go. sitting right over here, Rachel, who's done a great job. And I've realized as the world changes, you got to be in front of it, not behind it. Tech is the big new move. Mm-hmm. You know, we control our own platforms in house. We control our own clients in house. We control our own designs with either renderings or digital walkthroughs. We control our lead base online. We control our leads from our website now come right to me on my phone. Wow. Um, you know, I'm I'm of the age of that technology is going to control the world. Mm-hmm. Yes. And as a firm that deals in real life images to a client, mm-hmm. this is what I love. Yeah. Instead yeah. of pulling a picture out of a magazine, now I pull up my iPad and say here's 100 projects we did. Would you like to see them? Would you like to walk through the space? Wow. Love it. See, that's how the game's changing. And with realtors interfacing with us, we understand what they're dealing with in the job. Hey, Jay, can you change the color of the wall? No problem. Can you change the built-in? No problem. Would you like the house to be pink, yellow, blue, red? So you can actually show a client 3D virtually anything they want within minutes. So it's a game changer from design. But our services help, help the realtors sell the property. That's incredible. And like what out of your client base, what percentage would you say are realtors that are using your services? Oh, man, I'd say from Bob and I I would say 50 percent of our business model comes from realtors and brokers uh, all over. I mean, we have great relationships locally with, you know, the Christian angles of the world, the Chris Dites of the world. 
the Ryan Beckett Center. Oh, there you, go. Thank you. you know, we, we play in Wellington. We play in Miami. You know, realtors are the pinpoint of a relationship with the client. And I've realized that you guys cultivate that mm-hmm. relationship. And it starts with you. And when it's handed off to me, I have to take really good care of that client, their vision, and what they expect moving forward. It is. You know, uh, you know, real estate is such a relationship business. Yeah. And now being able to leverage technology to make those great business connections and foster it and maintain it, I mean, it's a total game changer. Obviously, with Real Trade, you know, a, a great social platform for real estate. We have now, what, 700 agents on yeah, there. That's yeah. great. Love Congrats. to connect with some great, you know, decorators unlimited. Love to hear about and, it. And, and involved. yeah, and, and connect those things because, like you said, real estate, it, even, even as we're trying to disrupt it with technology, it is very, very, you know, relationship driven. Right. And who would you say is your biggest kind of demographic in your customers? Like, uh, uh, Obviously, realtors are giving a lot of the handoffs and the recommendations. Is it more sellers, more buyers? Like, what, what are you seeing? We're seeing a, a mixed bag of all of that. Uh, sellers, buyers, a lot of new developers, as we were just communicating, uh, moving into town, buying up parcels, single family, multifamily. I mean, you've got a major influx of people from all over the globe coming to Florida, whether it's the economics, whether it's the political views, whether it's the open schools. Right. It, it just the diversification in leads and resources has really changed our game thanks to the, the great state of Florida, in my opinion. I suspect the answer is the sooner the better, but w- at what point should someone reach out to you like in the phase why they're looking for a home? Like, w- w- at What phase is the best? Well, the best is before they finally pull that trigger. We want to make sure and they understand what they're buying. Does the house function? Can we create the vision of what they want? And how much will it estimate the cost? Mm-hmm. With our firm having so much diversification between architectural, construction, and furnishings, we can give them a ballpark figure mm-hmm. and an estimated time to go along with those so the client can make the best decisions for them and their family. Awesome. And, and as it relates to tech weaving and having its fingerprints on your business, what would you say the benefits are? Um, I've done some tech stuff, candidly, on my firm where I wanted to add tech wanted to add tech, and then I found, like, maybe I'm just trying to add too much tech. So what would you say the things that you're doing that you see benefiting potentially the realtors, the buyers, the sellers that are really game-changing your industry for the for the audience? One of the things we've learned to do is ask our clients what they want digitally. We created a client questionnaire. There you go. It allows me to understand their needs, their wants, their styles, their likes, and their dislikes. But then we took the, the positive spin of using tech. So now before I'll start a project, they must download and send me images from Pinterest, House, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. So now that I have a digital print, I also have a visual understanding of what they want. It's like a mood board. They created a mood board for me. (laughs) I saved 20 minutes and and thousands of dollars because now Mr. and Mrs. Smith can say, this is what I like and here's what I like. And by the way, here's what I don't like. And I'm like, ding, the bell went off. So now our path to success is moved up so much faster. We're wasting less time. The clients understand exactly what they're getting, and I can produce like that. I'm clicking Mm -hmm. forward for my clients' interest, and we're saving them time and obviously money. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And let me ask you something. This is kind of just like a personal thing. What do you see design trends right now? Like I know like coastal contemporary was so hot here in South Florida. (laughs) You know, know, I mean, I I know, but is there something that you see here that's changing the landscape here in South Florida? You're on the cutting edge of it, right? We are. We're blessed to work with some of the best architects, you know, Smith and Moore in town, uh, Affinity, uh, Mitch Miller at Village Architects. The architects are dictating the future. Yeah. What's really cool is we're in the state of technology where it's the cars are driving themselves. Mm-hmm. Houses are becoming cleaner, more modern. There's no more art in the house. There are people using video walls to change their imagery. Wow. We just had wow. a house published in Florida Design as one of the most state of the art houses we've ever done for a client. And it's literally just like a clean museum box. It's stunning. It's beautiful. It's probably not my favorite decor. Mm -hmm. My client loved it. But what we're understanding is the game is being changed by the international market moving to South Florida Mm -hmm. and what the architects are dictating. Because you went from a traditional sense 20 years ago. Now you're almost into the modern sense. Yes. Where before it was a lot of details, now less is more, which it's it's a different variable. And for our firm to have six designers still with us since from day one, they can dance in traditional one day, and the ne- next day they're dancing in you know mid century modern. Which wow. that's my claim. I love mid century modern. I think uh, you can make yeah. it timeless. You know, one thing about our firm, if I could put one note of what we do really well, is we design timeless interiors. And when you design a timeless interior, no matter it's a house done today or Mr. and Mrs. Smith buys it in 10 years, 
that's what the game wants. That's what the client wants. And that's what we're able to produce with a great team I have. I'm glad you said that because my next question was about value. Um, the only taste I have is in my mouth, as you know. <laughs> oh, I've seen you dress. Yeah, it's all good. E exactly. Exactly. <laughs> one brown yeah. shoe, one black sock. E exactly. So, so cross, plaids, go for it. Exactly. And, and as our audience, you know, being very uh, diverse in buyer, sellers, realtors, I'm curious in terms of value because I'm a value buyer, where it's a pair, whether it's a pair of loafers or a car or whatever. And I like the function of timeless because I've seen things in all of those spaces where it's really cool today. at that moment today. Yeah. And before you know it, two years goes by. You know, I, I know. think as I get older, time goes faster. You know, my, my <laughs> elders told me that. And I really like the timeless, um, you know, like you have a Porsche or like a, a classic loafer. You know, it, it has kind of the same design that's kind of timeless. And I value that. Are you seeing that, and I just believe this to be the case, this, this timeless and even what you do, man, it's got to add so much value. So when they go to sell it, uh, wouldn't you imagine? And I assume that's your experience, no? Well, with every client, whether they have an open blank checkbook or they're a valued client as far as value engineering, mm -hmm. you have to be creative with why you're using money. There, as you guys know in real estate, there's good ROI. For us, we look at your ROI. It's your family room. It's your kitchen. Yes. It's your master bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's your master bath. And it's your outdoors in Florida. Those are the main areas you invest your money wisely in. And the secondary ancillary is like your guest bathroom, your guest bath, your laundry rooms. The areas where it's not really seen to your everyday guests, where the next home buyer really doesn't care about it, that's how you bring value to the property. So if I still am building a house for $10 million, I'm going to still put the core money into those five ROI areas so that when the house is done or has to sell for market, mm -hmm. whether it's a spec or furnished home, or for the end user, there's value instantly exactly that's what you want. and i want to ask a question i mean you know to make it real simple for the listeners like what's the one thing they should focus on if they're of the home if they're going to add value would they get the best roi like the number one kitchen kitchen kitchen, kitchen. without a doubt it's the heart of the home it's where every mostly women but sometimes men live and die and breathe there that's where your family comes to gather that's where you have the great conversations and you have actually get to pass bread and have time with friends you know good times with your friends maybe have some wine there you go <laughs> you know you enjoy go. the moment and uh, that's the best ROI and then second would be the master and then third would be outside but Florida don't forget most you're spending a good portion of your time outside mm. so besides the house functioning number one is function if the house doesn't function don't buy it Number two, make it look beautiful afterwards. Interesting. And what about curb appeal? That almost became cliche in the market about curb appeal. And I think in my experience, you know, selling real estate, it goes in that psychology of one chance of a first impression, right? So it's what you see on the front. What are you seeing in, in, as it relates to curb appeal? Does that move the needle still? Well, it moves it slightly. You know, one thing about South Florida, you have great landscape and you have beautiful weather. So the curb appeal is already 50% there. It all depends on the architecture, whether you're dealing with Palm Beach and Arcon, where it's very challenging to get the home you want because they have so many strict guidelines. Yeah. But if you don't, you know, I think a well-balanced curb appeal house should have great curb appeal from the front to the minute you walk inside to our interiors, to the minute you go outside. So from the front or back of the house, it's timeless. It's beautiful. It's well-appointed. You know, you, we're not in a very uh, northeastern type of climate. You don't have a lot of those style of homes down here. So you're seeing transitional and coastal mm -hmm. and timeless and mid-century and modern and traditional still. M Mediterranean was the foundation of Florida. You know, you still have those strong, beautiful Mediterranean homes. So you still have to have that curb appeal from the outside, but it has to function through the inside. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's awesome. i um, trying to think what else. So in, with regards to your interaction with clients, you mentioned, so is it still kind of a CAD mechanism and you're bringing them in office and that's how you kind of bring the mood board to reality with tech? Well, what we're doing with this, once we've got the client questionnaires and we have their images of what they want, then I assemble the right team. We try and base it on personalities. Who's the right fit for Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Is it personality? Is it style? Is it timing with our other projects? And then we actually understand what they want. So we do use what we have our own CAD department. So I have an in-house architectural team. So where the other architects stop, we start. So we create all the flooring schedules. We pick the flooring, the cabinetry, the countertops, the plumbing and appliances. We design them, we put them into ID form, and then we render them. So Mr. and Mrs. Smith nowadays, instead of looking at a black and white sheet, as you look on our new website, it'll show a black and white sheet, and then, they, then you see a colored rendering. So she can't go, I can't understand this, or I don't understand what I'm looking at. What is that? So what we're able to do with tech is actually give Mrs. Smith exactly what she wants, and she goes, oh my God, that's what my house is going to look like? Wow. And you go, yeah. yes. And she goes, I don't like that tree in the corner. You go, click, and the tree goes away. Yeah. So, wow. so really it's really, cool. and it's going to get better. The architects are using better programs. 
the developers are coming more 3D renderings, the renderings local are getting better, in, the international market for renderings being done overseas because of value engineering is huge. Yep. And their stuff is so state of the art. The landmark project my business partner Bob's doing uh, over there on PGA is literally the renderings were breathtaking. I, yeah. I couldn't even tell between that and a real image. So when you're getting that photorealistic, it's going to change the game for tech, but also for the buyers that you guys are selling to. They're really going to be able to see, touch, and feel what their end result is. Do you find that helps people on new construction? Uh, you know, in my experience, the the two best times or less friction times to sell a new construction home is one when it's a dream, before the break ground, and then when it's completed, when they get the certificate of occupancy. I find that buyers, my clients, sometimes when they're walking through studs, you know, us excluded from that, right? They're walking through. The <laughs> I appreciate that. It's been a while since <laughs> when they're walking through and the drywall's not up, it sometimes kind of muddies the water in it their does. brain. So at least me and my experience in new construction, when you when you have the dream, and I think that based on what you're explaining, you just have more tools to help paint the picture, both for the person trying to sell the listing itself, but also it's a better value add, in my opinion, for the buyer. Because they have a way better understanding of what they will be getting delivered, right? 100%. I mean, most of these very talented uh, seasoned architects now are creating their own renderings. Mm -hmm. and when they're creating those renderings, it actually helps paint a picture from the outside. So when we get inside, we take the outside, and then we create interiors for the rendering for the interiors. So when that product goes to market and we give all those images and they're uploaded on the website, like some of our large towers with Coulter and GL Communities or Toll Brothers, they can literally see from start to end so a homeowner doesn't have those question marks. Mm -hmm. They can actually visually understand what the end product's going to look like. And that, I think, is a game changer. They're not waiting till the last piece of drywall or wall paper or furniture goes in to buy it, they're buying it at 50% completed because they know what they want and they might be able to make small little changes to that. So the renderings and the tech of our industry is a game changer. That's why we want to be in front, not behind. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I want to be a leader in tech because mm -hmm. people are not grabbing magazines anymore. You're on your iPhone, you're on your iPad, I'm on a Mac, mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing. I'm, I, I look at magazines and I'm like, people call me, do you want to advertise my magazine? I'm like, no. How many <laughs> followers do you have? They go, what do you, what are, what's a follower? I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to know, do you have 20,000 followers? Do you have a million followers? Like, this platform of what we're trying to do and create is based on tech in the web, and we have to be in front of it. And, in, and if we are and we're successful, if Rachel's successful, I'll be successful. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Can you think of anything good, like in your experience, Ryan Poole, that would be good to ask him from a design and uh, deck course? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we have a lot of listeners, obviously a lot of realtors, a lot of you know buyers and sellers, but he has a unique position, Jason, where you're sitting there seeing orders come through. Have you seen anything shift here with the market? <laughs> That's a little bit of a conversation yeah. that I want to get into because yeah. obviously you're dealing with a lot of people spending money in real estate. It's been a weird, you know, COVID obviously was a terrible thing for the world and it's been challenging for health and finances and business. And now we're dealing with inflation and you're dealing with a weird market. And we've been on such a run and it's such a high for the last three years. I mean, I've never worked so hard in the last three years of my life and I'm, I, I love to work. I'm a junkie. I'm, I'm, I'm fixated on my industry and wanting my team and the company to be successful and make my clients happy. But the last 60 days, you've seen the market, I don't know if it's a slowdown, I don't know if it's a correction, but the faucet is what I call slightly turns to the left, where it turns off a little bit, where the architects aren't selling everything, the inventory we know is not there. Um, so there has been a correction, but then all of a sudden this week, the leads are back. Mm. So for the last three years, it's been a lead, a lead, a lead, a lead, a lead, and now it's like a lead, and then a lead, and then and it's kind yeah. of an up and down. So you know, the one thing about having great relationships with realtors is they dictate the markets. You guys are in charge. Your website, your your business, that's what's going to dictate the market. Is Because before it was all a statistic. Well, now you have tech behind it. Yeah. Now you have factual numbers. Now you have how many people hit your website. How many followers do you have? How many leads were generated from tech? Mm -hmm. So as much as my phone doesn't ring mm -hmm. at the front, my cell phone rings, but now our web is up. So wait a minute. The phone goes down, but the yep. web goes up. I still, at the end of the day, how many leads am I closing? How many jobs are we getting? How many jobs have we earned? How many jobs have we lost? So the market is going to have a correction. Mm -hmm. So our, my goal is to make our presence even bigger, better, faster, stronger on tech. Love that. It is. And that's where you can leverage those online connections, really get in front of most people and, and get the word out there. Right? Absolutely. I mean, you, if you don't have a good web, if you don't have a good platform, and then without Rachel having my own marketing manager in-house – 
I'd be worse than my competition. Now I'm going to be the leader. They're, hopefully they're following me, and they're going to try and steal my ideas, which is great. It's a, con it's a compliment. When someone takes a, a knockoff of our design and creates it in a bedroom or a bathroom, or, that's a compliment. Yeah. But being the, one of the founding leaders of this industry, which Bob has done and made sure we stay that strong, now I just want to make it better. Now I just want to get tech involved, and I want to make sure we're, we're, we're the leaders of the forefront. And you're, you're on the Real Estate in the Digital Age podcast here. Yeah, right? you go. I'm the first. I know. You're doing it. Oh, yeah, it's first interview. Yeah. Like that. Jason Lynn. All right. Coming through. First, not last. So since we have sellers, realtors, uh, what would you give them just in terms of little nuggets of wisdom with all of your experience on ways that they could move the needle if they're getting their property ready to sell? I mean, we know declutter, different things <laughs> like that. Is there anything you would give our audience that are just good little high-level tidbits that are great kind of general recommendations? Absolutely. You want the place to be neutral in color. You don't want to have bright red walls and ugly wallpapers and bad decor. You know, clean it up to your place about cutter, but maybe give everything neutral. Make it look more open, more airy. Open up the blinds. Bring that natural light in. Just keep it as neutrally balanced because your goal as, as a person that has a property is to appease 80% of someone coming in to buy it. When we're working for some of these large, great developers we work for, when we're designing models, it's the same thing for putting a house on the market. You want to appease the mass. Mm. When you appease the mass, your opportunity for sale increases drastically. Right. Because otherwise, you're targeting marking 10% or 15% instead of the wide range, which we try to do as a firm when we're working with these developers. Awesome. Same thing when it comes to a buyer. I mean, Mrs. Smith can walk into a house, but she sees one red wall. It's over. I don't like yeah. red wall. We can paint it. I don't care. I don't like the house. She walks out. <laughs> I know. It's done. <laughs> No, that's a great tip. Just having that neutral and a lot of light. I mean, I've always felt lots this. of light. And Florida is the best. And you know, and you guys show homes, and you have people there. You open up all the windows and all the doors, and you make it. You make the space feel larger. You know, that's that's the goal. Is the outside comes in. You know, you've got beautiful backdrops with palm trees and water. For you realtors, it's an easier selling point than being up in the Northeast where you got snow and dark and gloomy and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, just to piggyback on your advice, my experience in sales is, you know, to Jason's point, you want a neutral something because people need to be able to see themselves in it. I mean, that Correct. that's the goal. So, and, and it's not that you're pulling the wool over their eyes. You're just letting them see the forest for the trees, right? Correct. So in my experience, it's decluttering, you know, kitchen's a big thing we always recommend. But one thing that I add that might not be in your guys' scope is, is smell. Mm -hmm. Smell is big and not because it's a bad smell, because in what I, I think I read this somewhere, uh, fact check me. Vogue, you're reading Vogue again? It, it was Teen <laughs> Magazine, sense. I think. Teen? <laughs> that even makes more sense. That was the, where The Bachelor was. <laughs> but, but Bachelor in Paradise, you mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we are in paradise. The olfactory sense, your sense of smell is the closest related to your memory, right? And a lot of times, you know, I show, uh, once I learn what someone doesn't want, you know, we start to cross that list and you kind of go through a process of elimination and people remember kind of what they saw last. So what I believe to be the best fit for my client, I tend to load those properties toward the end because that way they can compare everything against it. But the smell, it could be perfect. It could be the perfect property. But the, that's how they'll talk to their wife about it. They're yeah. like, oh yeah, that place that smelled like cat or that place that <laughs> mold. <laughs> whatever. So we even recommend paint cleanup you know uh, it's like the psychology of a new car smell or Krispy Kreme donuts or McDonald's there's a lot with the the, the smell so a lot of people tend to just do what they do vis like visually and not think about all of the aspects of psychology so that's just my little recommendation for the audience it's funny you say that if you go into some of these beautiful model homes and developments around here you walk in you smell like, wow, there's fresh baked cookies. There's oh, yeah. no cookies being baked. <laughs> there's none. <laughs> the candle. There's a candle somewhere that does it. So to Ryan's point, that's part of the elements of what buyers want to have appealing to when they walk into a, a single family, a multifamily, uh, whether it's an old house or new house, is you have to have, you're first attracted visually. Mm -hmm. Then you're attracted physically. Right. Then you're attracted by the sense of smell. So I agree with you. Yeah, there you go. Is there anything that you could kind of, illuminate us on is what you're seeing with your experience all the different touches that you have with different demographics as it relates to you wish realtors would do this better because it would help them or buyers or sellers or clients just kind of like a through <laughs> oh you're putting me in the Now's corner your chance, you're, chance you're, to, oh, to man, kind of like a through line not 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 to uh to hit us over the head with it per se but something that you see in the industry is like an inefficiency that you think would improve you know, any one of our listeners' life as it relates to design and decor? I don't think, you know, the one thing I think 
being as lucky as we are to work with the great realtors we do is they call us for the answers before giving them to the okay. clients. That's you know, I think, I unfortunately, my, five, my phone rings seven days a week, sometimes nights, mornings, whatever. They'll call me and say, hey, Jay, what about this or what about that? I think the, the high-end detailed people that we work with are smart enough to realize that they need to use the teammates around them mm-hmm. to give the client the right answer. When they give the client the answer and saying, that, oh, you can take down this wall and you can't take down this wall, then they're in the corner, then they can't close, the high, client doesn't want the house. So I think what my only advice is if the, if the realtor does or does not know or wants a, a question answered, call us. Yeah. Call us at Decorators Unlimited. Call me. I'm, text us, email us, whatever. We'll give you the answer. My time's free to the realtors because I'm so fortunate enough that they do send us a lot of opportunities. And if anything I can do to help them get the sale, that means it's an opportunity for me, for me to get the sale down the road after them. It so is. it's a partnership in crime. You've got to work together to be the best. And I'd rather be there at the meeting to tell the clients the bad news instead of the realtor telling because – If it's a professional there, they know I'm going to give them an honest answer. Whether they like it or not, that's my goal. I'm not going to tell them anything, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And then that way they can make the best conscious decision for them and their finances. Yeah. No, I mean, it really differentiates yourself as you're sitting there, real estate agent, listening out here, and you're trying to make yourself better and more appealing to your clients to have someone in your network as you, Jason, this amazing you know, decorator is, is incredible, right? Yeah. Someone that they can rely on. That's going to help them what? Close more deals, right? Yeah. It's going to help help them sell more real estate. So it really is to make these connections. Very well, important. yeah. You mean we help each other out to be successful together. I need them. They need me. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it comes down to one simple thing. Giving the clients exactly what they want, whether it's value, whether it's design, whether it's location. As long as at the end of the day, Mr. and Mrs. Smith sit on that at the back of their house with a nice drink one night and go, God, we had a great team around us. That's yes. what's important to me. I don't need the accolades for me. I mean, at the end of the day, what's really important to me is my team. I want my team of employees, my team of designers. I want them to be happy. I want them to work on the most amazing projects. I want to give them the best opportunity to work for the best clients. That's what thrives, and that's what pushes me. And most of the time, it's a team approach. You have an architect. You have a builder. You have an interior designer. You have a landscaper. But it all starts with real estate. I mean, to be honest, every deal I do, there's a realtor way in front of me yeah. or a broker. <laughs> And to cap, you know, have those relationships is because at the end of the day, that developer or client is going to go out and buy another property. Yep. And hopefully they use the same team. But if one person doesn't work together as a team, then we're lost. So that team approach to me, from him to me, to you, to any of us, that's highly important. That was a great answer uh, to call you. Um, it was an unexpected answer, a great answer. Yeah. And that kind of is what is weaving uh, the theme is weaving through our podcast is in my 15, 16 years of experience, your 20 years of experience, I've understood and fully appreciated how important it is to have a good team and have the right experts. It saved me probably legal troubles. It's <laughs> created <laughs> created happy clients. Yes. It's made my job easier and more fulfilling as a result. And, you know, with your level of expertise, you know, I've seen some realtors that they try to, to, to fake it and they try to oh, yeah. insert themselves where they are not the expert. And I would make a case based on my experience that that's a disservice to the customer, to the buyer, to the seller. So that's a, that's a great answer that you should lean on the people, whether it's the title attorney we're going to have on next week or, you know, the, the design decorator, the builder, the, you know, all these different kinds of people definitely lean on your expert. And that's why we have people like you. So you, as an expert in your space, can deliver that information to the audience. Well, it's it, you take it to another level. I mean, how many times have I called you on real estate advice? Yeah. Hey, Ryan, I got a client. They're looking at this. Oh, that property won't sell. It's not this. It's not the right. You know, you want. I'm not a realtor. I don't know nothing. I know nothing about it. Mm-hmm. But I know from the setback here and the setback here and the setback here, is this house undervalued or overvalued? Calling on experts such as Ryan and everyone else in the game mm-hmm. allows me to educate my client. Yeah. When you educate your client, you're giving them an honest answer from a professional that they can make the best conscious decisions. So I think we all hold a relative part of the success project together. That's awesome. It is. No, and you know, one reason I got into real estate, love it so much, is you know, we have the opportunity here with the buyers and sellers, our clients, you know, to make the biggest difference in their life. I mean, this is the biggest, biggest purchase they Huge. have. When they sell, it's their biggest wealth transfer, and it's just it's such a rewarding experience to add value to that and make the process easier and make them happy. It, it's exactly it. You nailed it. You got to make them happy, and at the end of the day, it's a it's a big it's a big thing to spend millions of dollars on a house. 
and then you have to renovate it, and then you have to design it. And then you, there's a lot going on. So the more, the better your team is together, the more happier the client is at the end. And at the end result, that's I, I care about three things. I want the client to love their house. Mm-hmm. Please pay your bills. Yeah, <laughs> and refer us. That's it. There's no ego. There's no publications. People publish our work because I have a great team of people. I have 20 amazing designers. I have a great CAD department. I have a great business partner. We have a great construction division. It's not me. We're a, we're a team. And when you're a team, you can accomplish anything. Yeah, that's the best part. And to your point about being happy, have you seen the needle move significantly on someone's level of happiness with their space? Because there's that old cliche. Clutter causes confusion, right? So with your development and your design, does that have an effect on mood? Absolutely. Colors change your mood. Sound changes your mood. Sense changes your mood. So if you can bring someone into a, when they're coming from a, I just met with a client today, they're coming from the upstate New York, dark and dingy, and they're like, oh, this really doesn't fit and focus for me. I like light and bright. I said, how about an image like that? She goes, oh my gosh, that looks so peaceful. Right. So to your point, when you can go from a dark, dingy spot to a place in sunny South Florida yeah. with sunny degree weather, 80 and 80 degrees in it's, the middle of from October to May, 50% of that is already there. Now you change the flavor of ice cream on the inside of the house from dark to neutrals and grays and beige and whites, and then you bring some pop into artwork and accessories and area rugs. And it's, it's the easiest part of our job is to give clients what they want because they don't want that up there. Right. They want South Florida, timeless, coastal, contemporary, modern, whatever it would be. So it's easy, yeah, to your point. That's great. Yeah. No, it's great. You make, you, you make some great points, Jason. You know, design is one thing that can totally change a whole piece of real estate. We, we're glad to have you here on the podcast. We've covered some great things, Ryan. Yeah, no, it's been great. It's been fantastic. Though, as we land this plane, one uh, last question. Is there anything that you're seeing in design with tech? that you see coming down the road that's definitely going to happen or something you wish to happen? Or are you pretty happy with the space? Do you think it's not overly tech and you're pretty happy at this point? I think tech's going to control our game. I think for our firm, we're, we're launching a new website in about two weeks, right, Rach? So we're, our, our, our website's going to be more interactive. Mm. I think you have to have a stronger platform. I think you have to be more engaged with your users. You have to do podcasts. You have to do blogs. You have to do you know anything you can do to show your work and advise it on the big, broad stage that we have now. Not magazines, as we've said. Tech. I think is a total game changer. I'm not. I'm not yeah. now marketing to a thousand. I'm marketing to millions. Right. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I think I, I'm always trying to understand what's next. I have a very good friend that works at Google at a high ranking level. She's she's brilliant. And all I do is try and pick her ear every year. We go on family vacations, huh. and I borrow and I come on. Let's go to the side. What's going on? What's going to happen? What's going on with SEO and all this? And she gives me tidbits, and I sit back and I. She doesn't know this, but I'm texting them in my phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there so you go. now I'm trying to be ahead of the curve for next year, and then I share it with Rachel. I'm like, "Hey, get in front of this. This yeah. is the next mood." So, yeah, I, I, I hope it continues to get better. I hope we're more virtual. I hope we're more interactive with our clients. I hope that we can move faster, be better, be stronger, and and at the end of the day, just keep our clients happy and make my team as blessed as they can be. That's fantastic. Paul, can you think of anything else we should have while we have this expert here? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I could see some disruption in your space. You know, you, you, you learn about a couple different design softwares I use for websites where they're collaborative. Actually, Figma just got bought out by Adobe for like $20 billion, oh, which I is crazy. That. Yeah, it Which is like a collaborative design thing for websites. I could see something like that coming down the pipe for yeah. you know, design on homes, too. Yeah, we, we are making our website so interactive that when someone clicks on there, I automatically get a text. That's great. So I can be in front of Mrs. Smith before and the next designer is in front of Mrs. Smith. Uh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, Jason Lynn, Decorators Unlimited, thank you so much. You want to tell the audience how they can uh, reach out, find out more about you and your company? Yes, please check out uh, decoratorsunlimited.com. You can find us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, House, LinkedIn. You can contact me directly at jlynn at decoratorsunlimited.com. I'm here to help design service the world, baby. Fantastic. Fantastic. Definitely reach out to Jason Lynn, Decorators Unlimited. If you have any questions, remember to lean on your experts. Jason Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you guys both for having me. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for coming on. And thank you, Ryan Poole, as always. All right. Go Bachelor. Go Bachelor. Thanks, guys. This kitty. This kitty. Let's get it.